job. Hi, my name is Ben Gill, and this is the riveting and much anticipated tutorial for Recycling Adventures Episode 9, The Clone Wars, which is clearly a salute to the fan favorite, Star Wars Episode 2, also called The Clone Wars. This video is not to be confused with the behind the scenes for Episode 9, which you can find right here on the channel called How We Cloned an Innocent Girl, which is bloopers, outtakes, and nonsense. Um, you can find it right here on the channel. Um, this is the After Effects tutorial where I'll show you how we did this ping pong shot, um, one of the other cloning effects, and this nice Carl Zoom of Drosty effect. Alright, so after seeing Duncan Jones's film Moon, I saw this ping pong shot where Sam, Sam Rockwell is playing ping pong with himself. Alright. And I just wanted to recreate it, so we did almost the exact same everything and then I decided to make it into a full-on cloning recycling adventure so we made up a, a rough plot and plot this ping-pong shot in the middle of it and this is what we got alright so here we are inside After Effects and I'm using After Effects Creative Cloud but you can use probably even like the first After Effects and pull off a cloning effect just as convincing as this one it's basically just simple masks and feathering for the most part, for almost all the shots. This is the most complicated of them for sure, but there's no um, you know, CS6 plugins or anything that you would need to pull this off. So let me show you our raw footage. So we have two shots. We have a new Danny and an old Danny. New Danny is the one with glasses. Old Danny has no glasses. That's what we call them to keep them apart. So basically we had new Danny go through all her actions and um, play ping pong with a real ping pong ball with me. And if that was the take that we'd like, then we would have her go through all the mo all the motions. So she would play ping pong, we'd act it out, she'd she'd mess up that thing, and then I wouldn't touch anything. I would just walk around, and so she could keep her eye line the same, but I wouldn't touch the table, and then. Since we like that take, we just left the table as it was. So we left the table like that, where it's rotated and the net's all screwed up. And then this Danny comes in, and no one's touching the table so that it stays consistent. And I'm watching the last shot that we liked on a laptop right here. And then I'm acting it out so that we can time it properly. So uh, here I am. I serve it. And then she tries her best to match where the ball would have been and the other take and then she ducks and then that's where I throw it and she's just matching her eye line and doing the best we can. She dropped the net so, but it didn't really matter we cut it it was way too long anyway. So those are the two raw footage basically you just need it looks a lot more complicated than it is in the actual shot so basically you just need one person to play ping pong with someone else mess up the table and then leave the table as it is for the other take so the tables stay consistent, and it seems like they're interacting with the same table instead of being in two separate takes, which they are in reality. So that's enough of that. Let's jump into the effect. So basically, we have this new Danny footage masked out on top of the old Danny footage. Um, unfortunately, we had lots of natural light, which means the lighting can change in a heartbeat with a single overcast cloud. So we had to do a little bit of color correction. As you can see, this shot is a lot brighter than the other one. But we darkened it and had a lot of masking. 150 mask to, to um, fix our mistakes. So um, the mask is keyframed to move um, out of Danny's way and to move with Danny. So that's not interfering with the uh, um, old Danny, which is over here. OK. So, come back over here and show you. So we have these keyframes, right? So it just stays there for the most part. And as you can see, the ball is leaving. The ball goes through that, and we don't care because we're gonna add in the ball later to make sure it matches her paddle. So the 
the only time this has a huge movement is when new Danny comes over here to grab her paddle. So she grabs her paddle, and as you can see, there's some shadows here and on the back. That's what we're using to mask our movement. So when she starts to move, the mask also moves with her because we have to um, make room for this Danny to come walk over here. So this mask is moving, and if you look closely, the lighting is changing with the mask because this shot is a lot brighter than the other one. So the outside is a little bit brighter. But it look it's played off like it's just the shadow of her moving. So you don't even notice it. So it hides our mis our mistake, I guess, really well. And then it just stays over here the whole time. And this Danny comes over and fixes the net. Alright. And then let me show you how we did the ping pong ball. That's the main thing you're wondering about probably. It's really pretty simple because the ping pong ball, let me see a shot like where it is. If you look at the ping pong ball, let me get the full quality. Alright, so we look at the ping pong ball, it's just this like slightly transparent weird yellow colored sphere, right, with a lot of motion blur. So how hard is it to create a sphere like this in After Effects? The answer is not hard. So when it gets to a place over here where we need to replace the ball, right? Let me see this ball. So the ball looks like this, right? And then it just moves slightly. So you just keyframe the ball to move a little bit. So the ball bounces off the table, boom, hits the paddle, goes on. And then it's re regain, uh, rejoined by the actual ball, right? So we just have a few frames of a fake ball and the rest of the time have a real ball. So anytime it crosses the plane of this mask, we just add a fake little sphere with motion blur, CC motion blur, force motion blur on it, to mask our mistakes. And then see we have an opacity of 63, no, 100. Yeah, it's fading off, I think. So the ball comes down to over here, bounces up, boom, hits their paddle. So it looks like it actually hit her paddle and that they're playing with each other, but actually it's just a fake ball right here. And we just did that three different times, so you have to match the other ball and do all the, um, all the movements with the fake ball when necessary. And it's really not that hard. I mean, it didn't take me very long to do this effect. It seemed a lot harder than it was. But so we just have a ball up here bouncing off the ceiling like it did in the actual footage and her ducking. And as long as you time up your two takes properly, the effect is cake, really. So let's move on to a different one. Um, I'm not going to do every shot, obviously, since they're all pretty much the same. Most of them just have a mask through the middle. Um, but this is one of the more complicated ones, so I'm going to show you this one. This one is Uno. And if you remember the shot, she puts down the card. New Danny throws down her cards and starts spreading them all over the place, just spewing cards left and right on the table. If I can show you, if it will ever load. Alright, so here's her throwing cards everywhere. Whoa! So anytime that something interacts with the other clone, or goes in front of the other clone from one shot to the other, you have to rotoscope, which is like a taboo word to video editors, but sometimes you gotta do it, and this is one of those times. So you see these Uno cards are flying in front of the other Danny, right? She's not actually in this take. Her take is, she's old Danny, right? Where is she? Okay, old Danny. If we look at her footage, her footage is just like this, right? She just looks at a card, boom, puts it down, breaks the fourth wall, the end. And then in the actual shot, she's got all these cards going in front of her. So basically, all we had to do was 
first of all, we had to keyframe a little mask around old Danny to um, to have the pile in her shot first. All right, so she puts down her card, and when she's moving her hand, we move the mask. So. She's just sitting there. She doesn't move, so the mask doesn't need to move, so that's nice. And then we just have to deal with this shot. Alright, so this one is just her elbow, because the mask has a lot of feathering for old Danny. So we don't want any cards to... Um, you don't want to be able to see some cards through her elbow, like it's opaque or something. It's like slightly opaque. So this is just adding her elbow back in, and cards go behind it, some cards go underneath it, which probably doesn't make any sense, but for the most part we just had to roto brush these cards that are flying past old Danny. These cards are roto brushed, let me see, we have a second new Danny layer that's on top and it's just the cards. Um, this is all it is, it's just these cards roto brushed in and opacity turned to 85. So. You just have to watch each frame and rotor brush things that go in front of her. And the effects is sold pretty well. Um, I could show you one of the simpler ones. Like this is the Connect 4 is probably the easiest one. The one we started with for the normal board games. It's literally just a mask that moves. Alright, so she does her thing, mask moves, she messes with it. Boom. It's just a matter of doing one take where they interact with the board, then leave the board for the other one to interact with. So don't no one touches the board while you're setting up for the other shot, and then you just film the other shot, and then, then they interact with it. And if you screw anything up in the second shot, you have to start all over and do the first shot again. Alright, so that's the basics of the cloning effect. The better you keep your lighting consistent, the better your job is when doing these masks, because the lighting changes and there's shadows and you don't want to have to make more work for yourself than you need to. So let's go on to a non-cloning effect, the ending to this episode, which is the weird Carl's raccoon drosty zoom spin trippy effect. Alright, so let's just look inside the Carl pre-comp and see what we got for the base footage. So we got this raccoon, right, who stares at you, looks into your soul, opens up his mouth, his mouth becomes transparent, his eyes become blood red, and that's it. The end. So add an adjustment layer to his eyes, add added overlay and fill, and made his eyes red. Straightforward. And then for the mouth, we have a Luma mat, and if I show you this mat, we have a black mouth that opens up and turns white. So we just have a circle, the effect circle, on a white, white solid or black solid, and then roughen edges to make it look like it's furry, and then some blur to match the blur of the shot. And then we have it keyframed from black to white. Because the way a Luma mat works is anything that's black is opaque, and anything that's white is transparent. And anything in between is like partially transparent or partially opaque. So if we turn off this, you can see that happening. So as it's becoming white, it's becoming transparent, and whatever's behind it will show through. So we just had, had that happen and added an outside edge and then we did this zoom effect so basically we have just the one shot and then we duplicate it and put it below it, scaled it way down inside his mouth and then we keyframe that second one to scale way up way up and we keyframe the scale and position to be in the center of the screen Alright, so we have the pre-comp, and it's just the pre-comp. It's just sitting there, opens up his mouth, and then he suddenly starts to zoom. So how are we doing that? Basically, we just have 
a bunch of parenting. So if we turn off the parenting, you can see what happens without it. He opens up his mouth, and nothing happens. He's not zooming, he's not turning, but inside his mouth, they're zooming and turning. Let me turn down the resolution so we can go a little faster. So he's opening up his mouth, and it's rotating and zooming, but he is staying put. But the moment we, we um, parent him to the one below him, suddenly, boom, he's zooming, he's rotating, he's doing everything. So the way this effect works is this, this comp is parented to the one below it, and this comp is parented to the one below it, and this comp is parented to the one below it. They're all parented to the one below them. So you see four, this is number three, and it's parented to four, this one's number four, and it's parented to five, and so on, all the way down until you're happy. So the one at the bottom of the chain is actually the one in charge. So anything that the one in, on the bottom does controls all the other ones. So the rotation is actually added to the last one. And as you can see, it goes from 0 all the way to 1. And then all the other ones inherit it because they're all parented in a giant chain to number 10. So basically, you're just duplicating the 1 this one with the keyframes a bunch of times and offsetting it. So we basically just have a scale keyframe that goes way up until it's all the way until it's this far, right? So you can still see him and it's the position is moved too so that he is in the center of the screen. And then and then it moves on to the next one. So this one the moment this one starts moving, this one inherits this one's characteristics and it starts zooming along with these keyframes and so on and so on so it creates this cool zooming like paradoxical scary I don't know effect so that's pretty much it I mean it's a really easy quick cool effect and didn't know I was going to be doing it for this episode but it came to me in a dream so we just got boom, 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 and then zoom all the way through his mouth, and there's the Yahtzee shot. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. Sorry this went on a little bit long, but these effects are a little bit complicated and take a little while to explain. So I hope I explained everything well. If you want any other effect or you want me to go in more detail on any of these, I know I just grazed over them. Um, feel free to put them in the comments, and I'll do another tutorial if need be. Feel free to hit me up on the Recycling Ventures Twitter or on the Facebook page. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more After Effects tutorials and Recycling Ventures episodes. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Okay. Want me to show we, you how uh, to hold it? Plan? I know how to hold yeah. it. Yeah. All right, serve it then. All right. Damn, Danny. Nineteen two. Yeah. Come on, man. This is why I can't play games with you. Do you want to stick with you know, something else? Everyone wants to play games with you. You know, I can approach this in a different way. Remember when we went to flight school? What are you doing? Action. Organic. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Action. Organic? I'm gonna have to choose Adam Sandler.